One thing missing from Black Ops 4's 1.10 update yesterday when we got that big massive title update for everybody, PC I think should have it by now at this point. So one thing missing though out of all those changes, all those adjustments and all those content additions added in was the inclusion of camos within Blackout, something that as of last week was teased to come along with this week. And so by default, myself included, we kind of all just thought that we'd get it with the title update. Everything would be dropped all at once. But for whatever reason, it was delayed until today. So today we actually got our first introduction of how camos work within Blackout. I'm assuming there's going to be some adjustments made as time progresses. We'll get to why in just a second. And we also ended up seeing some different tuning to armor. So the entire meta shift that happened with the brand new armor plating that's now kind of been adjusted once again to maybe tweak the meta one time further within blackout at the moment so today we're going to talk about all these changes that happened today and as of yesterday again for you guys that may have missed it we detailed everything for the 1.10 title update for playstation 4 xbox one and now pc if you guys missed that that's yesterday's video you can check it out on the channel but that said let's just jump right into it so let's start out with the big thing and content addition here with this that being camos within blackout these will be available for you whenever you enter Enter into Blackout, and upon entering the main Blackout menu, you'll see that there is, next to your character selection, a new tab for Armory, where once you enter in, you can end up seeing every single weapon that is available within Blackout, even some ones that you might not necessarily recognize, like the Essex or the Zwie Handler, and everything out of that you'll be able to end up placing on some camos. You can end up going in and choosing some selective weapons, like the ICR Blind and Glory, you can have that by default, that regular one that you'll pick up. You have the option for all your performance and technical camos with within multiplayer and zombies. We don't have any blackout specific ones yet. Like what we said so many times here on the channel, it was interesting that pre-release footage allowed us to see that there was a tab for blackout camo. So maybe that comes in the future. I also don't think this is the furthest of the extent we'll get for camo customization within this just yet. And we'll talk about that in a second. But then you also end up having your camos of your regular paid ones in your black market, such as your shimmer, such as your cherry blossom and so on and so forth. But then when you get to the reactive and mastercraft, that's where it starts to get a little bit interesting and where you might get a little confused because yesterday we got a big update for how reactive camos work at its core. You end up having the ability to put reactive camos on any single weapon that you end up having, not just the ones that they're designated to out of the bioba bundle that you get from Blackjack shop or any of the ones you got from the contraband stream. So where it differs from yesterday's update is that we don't have every single reactive camo being transferable to whatever weapon you want to use it on. Instead, they only stick to the camo that they are designated to for that weapon. So for, say, yesterday's D-Day camo, if you want to use that reactive camo, you have to use it on the Mog 12. If you end up having, say, the reactive camo for the ICR, you can't transfer that to the Titan or the KN, and you can't do the same thing for the rest of those weapons. So for me, the big ones that I really wanted to use are the Titan reactive camo and also the Plasma Drive KN57 camo. Those are my two favorite camos by far in this game, and I can't use them outside of those weapons, which is unfortunate. And another big thing that you might notice whenever you jump in and try and customize your weapons is that whenever you have a reactive camo, chances are it's still going to be wrapped up. It's not going to come out with that immediate effect as what you have in multiplayer. It's not one-to-one, -one, again, transferable from there. You're going to have to re-unlock that reactive camo in Blackout. Now, from what I've seen, there are a couple of different challenges here for this. The one that I've seen so far are the three kills with each weapon for these. I don't know if that applies for all of them, but it is something that is relatively easier, and it doesn't seem like they have to be all in one game. So that's something that, of course, as time progresses we'll have more information on all that kind of stuff and any more that may be added in but all you got to do is simply get a couple of kills with these and it'll re-unwrap those and currently there is a bug that if you do finish one whenever you end up looking at the weapon on the ground before you pick it up it still sometimes shows the wrapped camo but it will actually be in fact the reactive camo applied whenever you pick it up so that's something to keep in mind as well the big disappointment here that you'll probably notice is that there are no mastery camos available at the moment so your gold your diamond and even your dark matter can't be applied in blackout to these weapons. Now that's where I think we're going to see some updates here continuing throughout this to kind of continually adjust how this armory will work because again those are the most sought after camos in Black Ops 4 and so to not be able to apply them to your weapons in blackout as well as something a lot of players are probably going to be upset with. But again 
as we see this and the reactive camo is still having that adjustment to get it up to speed with where we see it in multiplayer, I think we'll still see some adjustments here in the coming days to weeks within this armory system. And just like how you'd normally select a camo, all you gotta do is apply it to the weapon once you find it in game. You'll not only be able to see the camo on the ground on the weapon whenever you see it there, but also when you pick it up, it'll be automatically applied. So it's pretty cool how this works out and I'm definitely excited to show off some of my customization stuff here at this one. So definitely jump into Blackout and use some of your favorite camos now. But the other adjustment and big thing out of today came in the way of armor adjustments. Like we said, this might even shake up the meta once again for Blackout players. So if you guys remember correctly, as of the past week or two or something like that, we ended up getting the introduction of armor plating in which whenever we saw this introduced, we could now repair armor. It didn't necessarily break upon death, but it broke the durability down to which if you killed somebody and you put a ton of shots into them, they just totally sponged, their armor would be rather weak. So you'd have to use this armor plating you could find around the map to repair it. And that's something that really made late game a little bit more bearable for the aggressive player, but also it's something that kind of made it a little bit too dependent on armor. And so then this created another sort of seesaw effect of how OP is armor and how much of a crutch is it really compared to where it should be ideally. Now today we ended up getting another tuning pass here at this one in which level one armor stayed the same, but level two and three actually had a slight nerf to them in which the durability was changed for this to match level one durability. So for those of you guys that may not understand exactly what this means, durability was kind of that stepping stone for how many armor plates it would take to repair. I think the equivalents of these were 400, 600, and 800 respectively for level one, two, and three armor in which each plate offered an extra 100 durability. So in theory, if you picked up a level three, three off a dead man that was at the weakest point, it would take seven different armor plates to repair it back up to full. However, if you jump into a game right now, let's just take a level three for theory. If you take a look at your name indication on the left hand side of your HUD in which you have your health and then if you have a mic connected, it shows that as well. Right in between there, you end up seeing that there is that blue bar that indicates armor health. Now at its weakest point, I think I've seen it go down to one, but there are now only five ticks available instead of previously again, those eight. So in that sense, you you're now on the same level as what a level one armor has, and same thing goes at the level two as well, you'll still have those five ticks. Now that doesn't mean that there is now the same amount of health distribution or sponging available. Level three is still way more advantageous to have compared to a level one, but it is something that the durability in terms of repair is on par across the board, which means that armor itself will break easier. That's something that might be confusing is the mitigation on how much it sponges. Level three will allow less damage per shot to get to the player, while compared to a level one, it doesn't offer for the same benefit. But in terms of durability, it's more uniform in that sense where repairing it is something that is more in line with across the board. And so it's not spammed as much. In late game, you won't come into somebody that is almost invincible with a level three armor and 200 HP from a trauma kit. But regardless, outside of that, another additional change to kind of mitigate how much of a crutch armor is in Blackout is actually the plating itself. Previously, we had the ability to stack 10 plates in our inventory. We didn't have any sort of way to add that to our backpack or anything like that. It was its own separate category where 10 was the max no matter if you found more or not and if you had inventory space or not. Instead now of 10, it's now brought down to 5 only, which again, whenever you get armor down to its weakest point, there's only those 5 ticks, so it's going to take just about every single one if you have a max inventory of that. Now theoretically, if you kill somebody and pick up their armor, you can repair it and then steal whatever armor scraps they had, but it is something that now makes that spam of armor repair a little less frequent. I know that there have been tons of clips I've seen and even come in contact myself in game where I'd be sniping somebody and they'd just be repairing their level two, level three over and over again. So I could hit six or seven shots and in theory, they're still alive and kicking and ready to go and charge at me once the storm ends up moving. One additional change to armor plating as well as a very minor one, but you definitely notice it, especially if you're stationary, is that armor now to actually apply it to fix your armor now has been moved from two seconds to three seconds. So while again, in theory, three seconds isn't a lot. If you're out in the open and looting a dead bag or something like that, where you don't have as much cover, you're not sitting in a corner, that is an eternity because you always feel like a sniper could be bearing down on you, but that's something that's been adjusted again and hopefully should mitigate some of the issues with armor spam. Regardless, as with the other adjustments and meta changes here within Blackout, I think it's going to take a little bit of time to see the actual statistical data, the community feedback, and all things considered. So right now, it still might be in its honeymoon phase. I think this definitely is something that helps out compared to where we were last week, but it also is something that having played a lot today, 
I don't know if it's just been my luck in my games, but it does still seem like it's kind of crazy how much of a crutch armor can be. So I guess we'll see where this goes in time. There really is no way to truly bring it down to a perfect level. There's always going to be factors that make it seem OP, make it seem like it's much needed, but it is something that getting it down to at least the right point is important. So I'm happy the Treyarch are listening and fine tuning things as they see fit, and we'll see where these changes go. But that said, that's we're going to wrap it up. So wanted to detail the new changes here for you guys, both in the camo aspect and also within the meta aspect for blackout armor. That said, let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. What do you guys think here of this? You guys excited to use your camos and what do you think about not being able to use your gold, diamond, and dark matter camos and also universal reactive camos? Are you guys a little bummed out by that? I know that I personally am, but what do you guys think? And also, let me get your thoughts and feedback on the armor changes as well. Do you think it's enough? Do you think it's not enough? And if so, where do you think it should go from here? That said, hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure you drop a like down below. And of course, if you are new to the channel, make sure you guys subscribe so you don't miss a single thing regarding all things Black Ops 4, multiplayer, blackout, zombies. We got you covered with lots of updates, news, information, tips, tricks, all that good stuff. We got you covered. So if any of that interests you, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss a single thing. And if you guys also follow me over on Twitter and Instagram, those are the best places to get kind of come out on YouTube. Practically live on both those. So if you guys want to check those out, links in the description below. Well, that's it. Now, the way, thank you guys all so much for watching. My name is Espresso. I'll see you guys later. Take care and peace.